Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. All right, lesson 27, word problems leading to rational equations. Okay, classwork exercise one. Anne and Maria play tennis almost every weekend. So far, Anne has won 12 out of 20 matches. Part A says, how many matches will Anne have to win in a row to improve her winning percentage to 75%? Okay, so first things first, what percent is she at right now? Well, 12 wins out of 20 matches in order to get to a percent, percent means out of 100. So how do I make 20 100? Multiply it by five. And if I multiply her ratio 20, 12 over 20 times five over five, which is one, I get 60 over 100. And so right now she's at 60% win rate. So if she plays one more match, she'll be at 13 wins out of 21. She will play another match and wins. She'll be 14 wins, but 22 matches played. So every time she plays a match and wins, her win column goes up by one and her number of games played or matches played goes up by one. So this is just something I'm thinking about and to prepare myself to set up an equation. So let's get this out of the way now. So she's at 60%, she needs to increase her win ratio to 15% more to get us to 75%. So she has 12 wins. So what were we doing? We were adding the same value to the top and bottom. So let's call that the letter M for matches. So one more match and it's a win, we'll give her 13, two more to give her 14. But every time she adds one to the win column, she's got to add one M to the games played or matches column. So there it is. And that equals 0.75. Okay. And I'm going to represent that as a fraction. It just makes this so much easier. So instead of 0.75, I'm going to change that to three quarters. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator over here, 20 plus M. Multiply both sides by 20 plus M. And this will cancel the denominator. And I get 12 plus M equals and distribute. And that's 60 over 4 plus 3 over 4 M. Well, what is 60 over four? Four goes into six once with the remainder of two, four goes into 25 times, so that's actually 15. So now I have 12 plus M equals 15 plus three quarters M. I want all my M's on one side and I do not want a negative M, so I'm going to move the smaller. One is greater than three quarters, so I will subtract the three quarters over to the other side. Careful which direction you go. You do not want to end up with a negative variable. Okay, so when I do this, I get 12 minus 1 quarter M equals 15. Okay, 1 minus 3 quarters is a quarter. Subtract 12 over to the other side, and I get, that's plus by the way, 1 minus 3 quarters is a positive 1 quarter. Subtract 12 over to the other side, and I'm going to be left with 1 quarter M equals three. So then I just multiply both sides by four and we get the number of matches to, to, for her to win would be 12. So let's check that. If she wins 12 in a row, her win ratio will now be 24 out of 20 plus 12, which is 32. Okay. And four, five, six, these are both divisible by three. So three will go into 24 eight times and three goes into 32. No, it doesn't. Okay, so it's not three. Uh, how about even? 12, 16, again, six, eight, again, three, four. Okay, so three quarters is 75%. So that's just checking. So she has to play 12 more matches in a row to win 12 in a row to get from 60 to 75% in the win column. B says, how many matches will Anne have to win in a row to improve her winning percentage to 90%? Okay, well, we're gonna do the same thing. 
we're going to take 12 plus m over 20 plus m, and it has to equal 0.9 or 90% or 9 tenths. Okay, now I'm going to do fractions. I prefer fractions over decimals. So I'm going to call 90% 9 tenths. Multiply both sides by 20 plus m, just like we did before. These cancel and I get 12 plus m has to equal 180 over 10 is 18 plus 9 tenths m. Okay, subtract 9 tenths over on both sides and uh, subtract 12 over to both sides. So m minus 9 tenths m is 1 tenth m. Subtract 12 from both sides, that will leave 6. Multiply both sides by 10, 10 and m equals 60. Okay, so to get to 90%, she's going to have to win 60 matches in a row. Yeah, good luck with that. Okay, <clears throat> and we can check that. If she wins 60 in a row, that'll put her wins up to 72, 12 plus 60, and she's played 20 matches, 20 plus 60, is 80 and 72 over 80 half of that would be 36 over 40 half of that would be 18 over 20 half of that would be 9 out of 10 and there's 90 percent okay so divide both by 8 and we get right to here 80 divided by 8 is 10 72 divided by 8 is 9 so can Anne reach a winning percentage of 100%? All right, 100% means you win every single game. If she had only lost one game and she was 19 out of 20, she can't get to 100%. If she played a thousand more games, let's just say, and she's already won 12, that would put her up to 1,012 games out of 1,020 matches played. And I'm just showing this to you in the calculator. So if I take 10, 12 divided by 10, 20, whoops, try that again. 10, 12 divided by 1, 0, 2, 0, I get 99.2%. We're gonna keep getting closer and closer and closer to 100%, but it is impossible to get 100% after losing just one match. Even if you played a million matches, Okay, 999,999 divided by a million is not 100%. Okay, page two brings us to part D. And it says, after Anne has reached a winning percentage of 90%, okay, so she reached 90% in part B, which was 72 out of 80. Okay. How many matches can she now lose in a row to have a winning percentage of 50%? So we're going to take this 72 out of 80 and we're going to make an adjustment to it. So we want her to lose to find out where 50% is. So losing does not increase your win column, which is the numerator, so 72. So she plays one more match and loses. 72 plus zero is 72, 80 plus one is 81. Okay, uh, play two matches and lose both. 72 plus zero plus zero is 80 plus one plus one, which is 82 and so on and so on. So X is the number of matches played. And we wanna know how many matches that is that will give us a percentage of 50. A couple of ways to look at this. Um, if you want a 50% win rate, that means you won one and lost two and or one, two and lost four or out of four or one, three out of, actually I said one, one and lost two is one, one out of two, one, two out of four, one, three out of six and so on. In other words, the denominator is twice the numerator to get 50%. So twice 72 would give us the answer, but this is the algebraic way of doing it. And it'd be 72, the number of wins we already have over the number of matches we have already have plus some value that will give us 50%, which is 0.5.
So to simplify this, we're going to get rid of that denominator. So multiply both sides by 80 plus X. In doing so, these 80 plus X's cancel and I get 72 equals, and I'm going to distribute one half of 80 is 40 plus one half times X is one half X. And I just prefer fractions, so I'll do it this way. Now I need to simplify to solve for X. So I just subtract 40 over here, 40 over here, 72 minus 40 is 32. This 40 is now gone. It equals a half X. To get rid of that one half, I'm going to multiply both sides by two. So this is going to give me X equals 64. And in checking, I can say, well, 80 plus 64 is 144 and 72 times two is 144. So 72 out of 144 does in fact equal 50%. Okay. Now example, it says working together, it takes Sam, Jenna and Francisco two hours. So there's a, a key. It takes all three, two hours to paint a room. When Sam works alone, he can paint one room in six hours. When Jenna works alone, she can paint one room in four hours. Determine how long it would take for Francisco to paint one room on his own. So there's all the information we need, okay? So S is going to equal, that's Sam. When Sam works alone, he can paint one room in six hours. So if he can paint one room in six hours, we're gonna simplify this down to how much can he paint in one hour? And that'd be one sixth of a room because one sixth times six is one whole room. Francisco or Jenna, Jenna works alone. She can paint one room in, a, in four hours. So Jenna can paint a quarter of a room an hour because a quarter times four is one. So the question is, how long would it take Francisco to paint one room on his own? So Francisco would be one over some value. I'll call it X. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to find out the sum of them. So it says here, working together, it takes Sam, Jenna, and Francisco two hours to paint one room. So that'd be a half a room an hour. One half a room per hour, right? Half a room in one hour, a whole room in two hours two hours to paint one room. So that would be S plus J plus F. The three of them takes, <clears throat> we'll paint a half a room in an hour. But I know Sam is already one sixth. Jenna is one fourth and Francisco is one sixth or one over X per hour. So this all equals a half. So obviously when you multiply fractions, you have to, or add fractions, you have to have common denominators. Okay, I can't add one six plus a quarter. I need a common denominator. So looking at all of these terms, I'm going to put this all in parentheses. I'm gonna multiply by a common denominator. Well, two will go into four and two will go into six, but four will not go into six. So the next multiple of six is 12. Four will go into 12, two will go into 12. So there's our common denominator, 12. And then we have this X. So my common denominator is 12 X. If I distribute this throughout, I get 12 X over six plus 12 X over four plus 12 X over X equals 12 X over two. Simplifying this, 12 divided by 6 is 2. 12 divided by 4 is 3. X divided by X is 1, leaving the 12. And 12 divided by 2 is 6. Okay, so this really cleans up quickly and nicely. And we have like terms here, and then we're down to a linear expression. 5X plus 12 
our linear equation equals six X. Subtracting five X over to the other side, we're going to get 12 equals X. So there is the answer. So it will take Francisco to paint a room, it would take Francisco 12 hours to paint one room all by themselves. Okay, Francisco works really slow. All right, number two, exercise. That means it's your turn. Pause the video, see if you can do this, and then check the answer. So here we go. Um, it says, Melissa walks three miles to the house of a friend and returns home on a bike. Okay, so she has home and she has a friend's house over here. Okay, she averages four miles per hour faster when cycling than when walking. And the total time for both trips is two hours. Okay, find her walking speed. So the distance from H to F is right here. Melissa walks three miles to the house of a friend. So this is three miles. So she walks this way and then she leaves her friend's house and goes this way back home on a bike. Okay, she's riding a bike on this one. This one she was walking. Okay, so walking to the friend's house and biking back and it's still three miles. So there's our little diagram to look at while we're trying to figure this out. Walk three miles, get on a bike, bike back three miles. Okay. Okay, so we wanna use a formula. Distance equals rate times time. This is the formula we wanna use. What do we know about this formula? Well, we know the total time is two hours. The rates are different for both walking and biking. The distance is the same, three miles. So let's put this in terms of time. So if I rearrange this and divide both sides by R, I get time equals D divided by R. And this is the equation that we're going to use. So the distance of, so I'll do this walking in green. So the distance she walked was three miles. Distance over rate. We don't know how long it took her. And then we're going to add that to her biking. And she went three miles on the bike, but it says right here, uh, she averages four miles per hour faster. So that'd be her rate of walking plus four miles an hour faster. Okay, and that is going to equal the total time of two hours. So there's our equation. Three over R plus three over R plus four equals two. The only thing we don't know is her rate. Okay, find her walking speed. That would be just R. Her biking speed is R plus four. So we're trying to find her rate of speed, okay? Her, or her rate of speed. We're trying to find her rate. Let's just stop with saying that. Okay, so here we go. I have to have a common denominator. So I multiply this side. Let me do it in red, because that's what we're missing. R plus four over R plus four is one. And then I have to multiply this side by R over R. And that is going to give me three times R is three R plus three times four, which is 12 over R times R plus four plus three times R is three R over R times R plus four. And that has to equal two. Okay, so there's the first step. Okay, one other thing I do want to do here, though, I didn't do is we want to multiply. We, we, if, if we have a number over here, we want the same fraction. So I need to multiply two over one by 
r times r plus 4 over r times r plus 4. Okay, so r times r plus 4 over itself is 1 times that is still this 1. So let me just change this. So it's going to be 2r times r plus 4 over r times r plus 4. Okay, <clears throat> so now I have common denominator. So I'm going to get r times r plus 4 over here, but I need to add these. So 3r plus 3r is 6r. 12 plus nothing is just the 12 equals 2r times r plus 4 over r times r plus 4. Now remember what we said in prior lessons, if your denominators are equal in an, equals, in an equation, they just cancel and the numerators are equal. So now I have just 6r plus 12, it looks like a br, 6r plus 12 equals 2r times r plus 4. I'm going to distribute this. 2r times r is 2r squared, and 2r times 4 is 8r. Okay, and this is a quadratic, obviously, so I'm going to move the 6r over here, and that's going to give me 12 equals 2r squared, and I'm subtracting 6r from 8r, so it's going to be plus 2r. And then I have this 12 over here. Well, I want it to equal zero if it's a quadratic. So I have 2r squared plus 2r, and I subtracted 12 over here. Okay. So now that I've done that, I can factor out a 2. And that gives me r squared plus r minus 6. And again, we're going to factor. And we get r and r, factors of 6 that add up to one and they're different signs. So it's plus minus, uh, that would be positive three minus two. So therefore we set our factors equal to zero. So R has to equal negative three or R has to equal two. Well, think about that. Rate cannot be negative. So this is an extraneous solution. So my answer is her rate is two miles per hour walking. Add four to that and her rate of biking was six miles per hour. Okay, but the question was how many miles per hour was she walking? And the answer is two. Okay, page three brings us to number three. It says you have 10 liters of a juice blend that is 60% juice, okay? How many liters of pure juice are needed to be added so that the blend will be 75%? So what we're going to do here first is keep in mind that 60% equals 0.6 when you move the decimal two places. 0.6, if you say that instead of saying 0.6, if you say 6 tenths, okay? then that's what 60% is as a fraction. So we already have 60% or six out of every 10 liters is pure juice. We wanna get that up to 75%. So we need to add pure juice to the numerator and therefore it's being added to the total. And we want that to equal 75%, I personally prefer fractions, so I'm gonna change that to 3 fourths. 75% is 0.75 or 3 quarters. So here's our setup. And we simply multiply both sides by the denominator. So the only problem here with these is the setup. Once you figure out the setup, it's really quite simple. So then we get six plus X equals, well, 3 quarters times 10 is 30 over 4. So let's just leave it as a fraction. Okay, and plus 3 fourths. 
x. So I'm going to subtract 3 quarters x from both sides, minus 3 fourths x, minus 3 fourths x, and that will give me 6 plus 1 fourth x equals 30 over 4. So now I'm going to change this 6 because I need to add and subtract. I need a denominator of 4 and 6 is 24 fourths. So when I subtract 24 fourths over here, then I'm going to get <clears throat> Oops, this is 30. That's why I was pausing there. This wasn't making sense. So if I subtract 24 fourths from both sides, okay, then we're going to get one quarter X here and 30 fourths minus 24 fourths is six fourths. Multiplying both sides by four, the quarter will cancel and you multiply this by four, the fours cancel, and we get x equals six. So we need to add six liters of pure juice to get the blend up from 60% to 75%. All right, part B should be a piece of cake now because now they're just asking for 90%. So we're taking this equation and changing three quarters to nine tenths. So it's going to be six plus X over 10 plus X equals 90% or 0.9 or nine tenths. And multiply both sides by 10 plus X like we did in the last problem. And this is going to cancel and we're going to get six plus X equals uh, nine. The tens will cancel this time and we'll get nine plus nine tenths X. Subtract six from both sides. We're going to get X equals, actually I prefer getting the variable by itself first. So let's do that. I'm going to subtract nine tenths from both sides. So that's going to be six plus one tenth, not 10 tenths minus nine tenths X equals nine. Subtract six from both sides. We'll get one tenth X equals three, multiply both sides by 10, and we get X equals 30 liters. Okay, the more pure you want, the more difficult it is to get there. So we need to add a lot more pure juice to get a blend to be more pure. Part C, write a rational equation that relates the desired percentage P to the amount A of pure juice that needs to be added to make a blend that is P percent juice where P is between zero and 100%. What is a reasonable restriction on the set of possible values of P and explain your answer. Okay, so all they're doing here is looking back up at the top here. And if I were to change all my X's to A's, that's what the A is. So our formula would be there for six plus A over 10 plus A in terms of A instead of X equals, and percent is something out of 100 and they're saying P. So you say P over 100. So there's what they're asking for. We have 60% pure juice. We add pure juice to it, which is A adding pure juice to the 60% blend and to the total at the same time will give us a percentage of juice. The more we, the larger A is, the larger P gets, the closer we get to 100%. Okay, so there's part C. So we need to have, um, so if we're gonna add pure juice, it's not going to decrease. And we can't ever get greater than 100% or even equal to 100%. So P is always going to be less than 100%, but P is going to be greater than what we started with, which was 60%. Okay, and that's part C. 
Part D says, suppose that you have added 15 liters of juice to the original 10 liters. What is the percentage of juice in this blend? Okay, so all we have to do here is, <clears throat> let's see. We take this formula here. And it's, so P over 100 equals six plus a pure juice blend out of 10 plus a pure juice blend. And we want it to equal, we want to find out what that equals. So suppose you have added 15 liters, okay? So here's the original formula. And what we're going to do now is change A to 15. So it's going to be P over 100 equals six plus 15 over 10 plus 15. Well, that's going to equal 21 out of uh, 25. Okay. So 21 out of 25. Well, if I multiply the top and bottom by four, we're going to get 100. And 21 times four is 84. So 84 over 100 is equal to 84%. Okay, so if we add 10 liters of pure juice to our 60% blend, it will be 84% pure. All right, page four, part E, it says to solve your equation in part C for the amount A. Are there any excluded values of the variable P and does this make sense in the context of the problem? Okay, so all we're going to do first is cross multiply whenever you have a proportion we cross multiply 100 times six plus a first. I'll just write it like that. 100 times six plus a equals p times 10 plus a cross multiply. Then I distribute 600 plus 100 a equals 10 p plus p a. Okay. So now I'm going to get all my A's on one side. So I'll subtract a PA from both sides. I want all my A's on one side, but that's what we're trying to solve for. 600 plus 100 A minus PA equals 10 P and these canceled. Now I wanna move the 600 over to get the A's by themselves. So it's going to end up being 100 A minus PA equals 10p minus 600. Now I'm going to factor out, there's an a in this, so I can factor out an a, and that would be 100 minus p, when I factor that out, equals 10p minus 600. And I'm running out of room, so let me come up here. And then I'm going to divide both sides by that 100 minus p. So that's gonna leave a by itself, which is what we wanted. And this is my numerator, 10p minus 600 divided by 100 minus p. So there is my equation solved for a. Now it says, are there any excluded values of the variable p? So what will make the denominator zero? p cannot equal 100 because 100 minus 100 is zero. And yes, that makes sense because if you lose one match, you'll never be 100% ever again. So that does make sense in the context of this problem. Number four, you have a solution containing 10% acid and a solution containing 30% acid. How much of the 30% solution must you add to the one liter of the 10% solution to create a mixture that is 22% acid? Hmm. Okay, so what we're going to do here is 10% is 0.1, obviously, and 30% is 0.3. So if we have a 10% solution, so what are we doing? We're adding 30% solution to a one liter of a 10% solution to create a mixture as 22% acid. So we would take 0.1, which is a 10% solution, and we're going to add a 30% solution times A being some amount. 
divided by, and then we have a full liter and we're adding to it. So that's plus A. And that has to equal 22%. So in this case, it's just 0.22. So there's our formula. And so now we have to solve this. All right, so we're going to cross multiply. Think of this as over one or 22 over 100, either way. So we're gonna get, we're gonna multiply. Let's just do it this way. Just multiply both sides by the denominator. So I'm gonna multiply this side by one plus A. And what you do to one side, you have to do the other. So when I do this, the one plus A's cancel and we're left with 0.1 plus 30% of some solution equals 0.22 plus 0.22A by distributing, okay? All right, so then I'm going to solve for A. I wanna get all my A's on one side and get all my point ones on the other. So let's start just doing this all in one step. We've been doing this for a few years now, so you should be okay with it. Subtract 0.22A from both sides. Well, 0.3 minus 0.22 is 0.08A we'll have on the left, moving this over here. Subtract 0.1 from 0.22 and we get 0.12. So I have a 0.8a equals 0.12. Divide both sides by 0 0.08, 0 0.08, and a is going to equal 1.5. So that's liters. So we have to add one and a half liters of a 30% solution to the 10% solution to make a mixture that is 22% acid. Part B says, write a rational equation that relates the desired percentage P to the amount of A of 30% acid solution that needs to be added to one liter of 10% acid solution to make a blend that is P percent acid, where P is between zero and 100. What is a reasonable restriction on the set of possible values of P and explain your answer? Okay, so we're going to take that formula of up here. So it's going to be 0.1 plus 0.3a over 1 plus a equals p over 100, some percent over 100. Okay. All right. So we need p between All right, so write a rational equation. There it is. That represents that relates the desired percentage P to the amount of a 30% solution that would needs to be added to a one liter of a 10% acid. So there's this. We just used it from here. Instead of doing 22%, we said some percent P. And what is a reasonable restriction on the set of possible values of P? Well, if we're adding a stronger acid solution to 10%, we will not go below 10%. Okay, so we are going to put 10% here. So it can't be below 10%. If I add a 30% solution to a 10% solution, the percentage of acid will only increase. And it will never get to 30% because that 10% will dilute it. So our restriction on our percentage is between 10 and 30. Okay, and that's that. All right, page five, part C says to solve your equation in part B for A. So I brought that equation over. And are there any excluded values of P? And does it make sense in the context of the problem? So what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply. So let me just first write it as, um, 100 times 0 0.1 plus 0.3 A equals P times one plus A. Okay, so that's the cross multiplication and I distribute 100 times 0.1 is 10 plus 100 times 0.3 is 30 A and that's going to equal P times one plus P times A. Okay. 
And so now I'm going to move A over to one side so that it's by itself. So I'm going to subtract 30A over to this side. So that's going to give me, so if I do minus 30A and minus 30A, we are going to end up with 10 equals P plus PA minus 30A. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract this P over to the other side. So I'm going to get 10 minus P equals PA minus 30A. So now I'm going to factor out the A, leaving me P minus 30 on this side. Divide both sides by P minus 30 and we're done. Okay, we get A equals 10 minus P over P minus 30. So my denominator can't be zero, so P cannot equal 30, which makes sense, okay? The reason that makes sense is because we can never reach the 30% solution since we started with a solution of 10% and we're only adding 30%. There's no way to get to 30%. The 10% solution will keep it from being 30%. Okay, part D says, if you have added some 30% acid solution to the one liter of 10% acid solution to make a 20 26% acid solution, how much of the stronger acid did you add? So what you have to do is we have to find A in this equation right here. So I'm going to take A equals 10 minus P over P minus 30. And if we are adding, and if we want, to make a 26% solution, that's my P. So now I'm gonna say A equals 10 minus 26 over 26 minus 30. So A is going to equal 10 minus 26 is a negative 16. 26 minus 30 is a negative four. Negative divided by a negative is positive. 16 divided by four is four. So we had to add four liters of 30% acid to get the 10% up to 26%. Okay, page six brings us to the end of lesson 27. Go to your problem set.